Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I am Wildan Shah bin Subir Shah I'm, I'm gonna present to you The chapter 4 Which is Intimidation, Competition And Sportsmanship Or Gamesmanship Hi and Assalamualaikum My name is Shahri bin Muhammad Yunus So what is the intimidation? Intimidation is actually the behavior To make people scared or feel fear The other meaning of intimidation is to frighten or threaten someone usually in order to persuade them to do something that we want them to do intimidation also can be seen in two forms uh, the first one is uh, directly and the other one is the indirect uh, which we can see directly is uh, using our physical and indirectly is like using psychology Okay, we move to the next slide, which is uh, the types of intimidation. As you can see, uh, type of intimidation uh, is consists of uh, two, which is uh, for among coaches and also among athletes. So it can be uh, the two types uh, under this uh, two people, which is a uh, purposeful and non-purposeful. So uh, back to the coaches. Uh, usually, the coaches will use the intimidation in order to make the athletes uh, become more excellent in their career uh, by intimidation uh, by coaches athletes also can be aggressive um, actually intimidation is one of motivation tools that can shape better among athletes so uh, under the purposeful uh, by coaches uh, there is a uh, uh, positive and negative feedback so later on uh, I will explain to you and for uh, purposeful is more to motivate the athletes uh, become better while non-purposeful is more to the demeanor or attitude of uh, the athletes uh, uh, by Alex Sakot 2016 he stated that strength requiring high performance sports sometimes use harsh physical contact in various manifestation of violence brutality or intimidation as a part of the game strategy okay now we move to the methods of intimidation used by coaches so before this I mentioned to you uh, the coaches will uh, in the purposeful term have uh, the positive and negative feedback so uh, let me uh, remind you that uh, purposeful is when someone have uh, intention so non-purposeful is when someone uh, don't have uh, the intention so what is the methods of intimidation used by coaches all right so in purposeful intimidation they have a few of typical method being used by coaches and athletes such as raise the tone of voice curse kicking and all of it are for strong their mental and physical however it can be negative feedback of all positive feedback regarding purposeful type the negative feedback is typically used to motivate the athletes to perform well uh, and it is focusing on individual athletes towards uh, the goal or uh, the victory so uh, its focus is not on performance itself uh, while the positive feedback is for positive motivation and it is focusing um, toward the performance of the athletes all right so uh, that is uh, for the purposeful and then we move to the next slide okay before I forgot to say uh, that um, every uh, the purposeful or non-purposeful they have a physical and non-physical such as uh, we can uh, see that uh, like uh, for the physical is when the uh, someone uh, when the coaches uh, touch or uh, hold the collarbone of the athletes um, so that uh, is we can say the physical and for the non-physical like uh, the harsh talking or you psycho the opponent team so uh, we can see that is is it is for the non-physical okay so now we move to the the non-purposeful by coaches um, 
it is also uh, being used uh, by coaches towards the athletes generally intimidation can be experienced um, by everyone it can occur by the demeanor position address and by no purposeful motive intention or action often in a sports world athletes were intimidated by coach because of their performance or reputation during uh, training or tournament the reputation can be the victory ratio of wins to lose 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 um, professional experience by coach or intimidated by the coach uh, position um, however perception uh, is one of uh, key to overcome the problem um, therefore um, moral agent uh, is not responsible to ensure the intimidation but uh, everyone uh, must remember that uh, everything they are afraid to go through uh, are different comparing to others it is because of uh, perception is about uh, individual itself and it is unknown for another motives and intention uh, the perception cannot be used to decide uh, the moral issues so uh, from what on we can say on this slide is the number of a spool they have the physical and non-physical so you can say that the uh, the physical is the action and the uh, the non-physical is we can say that the demina the position or the dress okay so next is the intimidation from the point of view of the athlete the first one is a back trick which means uh, the competitor have uh, an advantage because their tricks may uh, make the opponents confused and the second one is uh, when the opponent is uh, threatened uh, which means the opponents uh, or rival will be men mentally down when fear conquered them yeah. uh, the third one is uh, the competitor is coward that is what actually athlete feels uh, it means when the opponents or uh, rivals already scared there is the chance for the athletes to win the game and the last uh, view from the athlete is uh, intimidation is uh, also a double-edged sword for the player why because uh, the athletes are having two uh, con contradictory aspect or possible outcomes uh, either their win or lose is because uh, the intimidation itself so now we move uh, to the methods of an um, purposeful and non-purposeful intimidation uh, that used uh, by athletes. Um, other than coaches, athletes also use the purposeful and non-purposeful intimidation. Usually, purposeful intimidation by athletes is uh, by intention, talking, or action. Uh, I want to remember you that I want to remind you that. Uh, there is also have uh, the physical and non-physical uh, uh, regarding the purposeful and non-purposeful so um, purposeful intimidation by athletes is by intention talking or action so you can say that a talking is the non-physical and the action is the um, physical so athlete will use uh, will use uh, it as a trick or psychology control to make the opponent out of the game as an example uh, a diver will practice uh, the routine and showing off the difficult skill so that uh, will be not easy to the opponent uh, to challenge it okay so uh, we move uh, to the okay then uh, we move uh, to the non uh, purposeful uh, uh, intimidation and the use uh, by athletes the non-purposeful is an unintentionally intimidation that can cause uh, the opponent to be intimidated by the size the mina and physical skill of an athlete so uh, the size and the mina is uh, for the non-physical and of the physical skill of an athlete is the um, physical uh, so injury and physical harm might be occurring in certain spots 
uh, such as uh, rugby so the rugby player uh, is uh, the intention is uh, want to win and not to harm the others or uh, the opponent when uh, they have uh, to tackle the opponent so uh, if that happen it is not about the moral question uh, but athlete uh, should take uh, their risks when get involved in aggressive sport so the responsibility will give their best shot uh, to bring the title so um, uh, as I can see that the physical is for the physical skin that used by athletes such as tackle and the non-physical is uh, by the size or the mina of the athlete that is the external form of intimidation so the external form is uh, of intimidation is uh, like from family uh, friends coach Friends and others. Uh, others means like a sponsor. Uh, we know that a sponsor is not get involved uh, directly to the sport, but it can be the intimidation for the athletes. Why? Because if uh, maybe the in the contract say that if the athlete is not performing well, then the sponsorship is uh, will be cancelled. And from friends is like we can see. Uh, the rivalry of uh, football fans uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia you can see that the intimidation is come from words uh, which is uh, non directly without using uh, any physical but they are talk trash uh, to our fans and our fan also did the same thing to the uh, Indonesian player that's the kind of the intimidation and then from the coach why coach coach uh, is the main factor of uh, that the athlete will be affected uh, that means when the coach is uh, uh, talking bad to the players that will become a uh, intimidation for the players if uh, they are feel affected uh, from friends and family like uh, if uh, an example if they said that if you are not perform or you are not uh, playing well in the games so you are not my friends anymore and they cannot hang out together uh, that thing is uh, also the example of uh, intimidation and now uh, we move uh, to the case study uh, so uh, the third is um, angry coach um, if fun, but T uh, ready to drop a few players in Kedah Thai. So uh, after losing to PK and S team, uh, which score is uh, four uh, zero, while, uh, which is uh, the PK and S is four and the zero is um, the total uh, Terengganu in the Super League in Shah Alam last Saturday. So Irfan Bhatti wants to drop the athletes for the upcoming match against Kedah. This is because there are some athletes who make mistake uh, in the early scores. So this article shows that Irfan Bhatti uh, as a head coach for the Turtles for the Turtles performed the uh, non-purposeful intimidation towards athletes when he want to uh, drop the athletes for upcoming match uh, indeed uh, it is a warn to the athletes but it also can uh, motivate them uh, to perform better in the next match okay so next uh, next uh, article is next case is the our bodybuilder our national bodybuilder which is uh, Sazali uh, right the article title is Sazali hit with a further four year ban. Uh, so, uh, the Sazali uh, is the one of the famous uh, athletes uh, in the Malaysia. So, the article indicates that Sazali Samad was banned for four years using external substances. At first, he was just suspended. Uh, at the same time, he could not be directly involved in bodybuilding activities but he was also involved the, in the activity so that is because he was banned for four years uh, despite being suspended he is still involved in bodybuilding activities 
as he is suffering from a lack of motivation if he is not practice, practicing uh, at the time he or he also uh, had to maintain his performance to make a comeback soon uh, this is kind of um, purposeful intimidation uh, by athlete so the last um, case is uh, the the title of the article is the former divers shock with a decision not to retain Zuliang so Zuliang is the uh, coach for the national diver so the article indicates that uh, previously both uh, athletes men and uh, women's uh, diversion performance was at high level with the presence of coach Yang Zuliang unfortunately the coach contract has expired and the National Sport Institute NSI does not want to extend his contract to continue uh, training for diver athletes so this is surprising uh, to former divers Yo Kenny and Brian Nixon Lomas as today's Malaysian divers performance is at a high level this is kind of uh, intimidation um, by management purposeful intimidation so the next case study is uh, about rugby world cup uh, the latest rugby world cup uh, last year in japan we can see that the defending champion who also the greatest team in the world uh, new zealand uh, or they call them uh, all black uh, lose to the england in the semi-final match they are actually try to beat the new world record and also try to be the first uh, and only team to win the uh, third uh, World Cup in a row so that uh, they actually uh, have been cut down from, uh, from by England so the intimidation come is uh, actually from the form of uh, Hakka where the New Zealand Hakka uh, is actually a traditional uh, trend to the country so all the other sport also do it but uh, after they won the match but in the rugby is uh, they will do the haka uh, for every game before the game uh, start so here what is uh, the effect is uh, we can see that the England team uh, does not affected by the all black haka and they try uh, to win the game and they did and they go to the final of rugby world cup the next case study is uh, about the rivalry of indonesia and malaysian football team it is actually come from fans the form of intimation is come from fans where uh, all fans uh, talk uh, trash uh, to their players and also the fans of uh, the other country uh, we can see that uh, in the Glora Bung Karno Stadium in 2010, uh, the Palace Suzuki FFF, uh, where Malaysia won the first time of the AFF Suzuki Cup, uh, the fans of Indonesia uh, are talking trash and uh, intimidate the uh, our players, uh, Malaysia players. Uh, we can see that the police of uh, Indonesia. Uh, uh, need uh, to make sure the Malaysia team are safe to the hotel they need to use the Barracuda uh, which is a, a tank uh, for from the police department uh, in Indonesia so the conclusion is uh, intimidation often happens in sport uh, it's either happened purposely or non-purposely and it is uh, happened uh, either directly or indirectly uh, so the all the athletes must prepare themselves uh, uh, to face uh, and to overcome this intimidation because uh, they can they can run from this intimidation because it will uh, happens in uh, any sport scenes uh, or arena uh, that's all Crisis, Lebih dari jiwa dan raga